Hello, hello, it's Monica from Crafting with Kling Lady and I hope you have an absolutely fabulous day. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create three double swing cuts using one template to create your cut base. If you like these cuts or if you've never ever created a double swing cut, this video is for you and I really hope you'll feel inspired and craft along with me because it is super easy to create. For my cards, I'm going to use Christmas Vintage Postcards collection from Relatively Thoughtful. I only use the design papers I really wanted to show you, but in this collection there are many, many more. As you can see, it has that beautiful vintage vibe, and I thought that would be perfect to create some double swing cuts. There are also some elements to fussy cut and beautiful backgrounds you can use to create your projects. So, if you like this collection, I left the link in the description down below. It is a digital collection, which means when you get it, you can print it as many times as you want. The color combo is simply gorgeous, so I thought, why not? Let's use those design papers to create my project. And if you've never ever created double swing card, this video is for you. So here I'm going to draw you all the measurements, and if you want, you can take a screenshot, and then you can follow the measurements. So I will need 11 and a quarter by 6 inches card. You can decide if you want a white card or colored card for your project. So first, my first measurement will be 1 and a quarter, then 2 and a half inches, 3 and 3 quarters, 5 inches, 6 1 quarter, 7 and a half, 8 and 3 quarters and 10 inches. So that will be at the very top and this is crucial because later on I'm going to show you where to cut and where to score. From the side I will need 1 inch and also 5 inches. So now I'm going to show you where to cut. So from 1 to 5 inches on 1 and a quarter, then on 5 inches from 1 to 5 inches, and then from 6 and a quarter all the way down from 1 to 5 and the same with 10 inches. Then we're going to create some more cutting lines as you can see right here. And now it is time to create some scoring lines. So this way we're going to have that amazing double swing cut template. And now, as you can see, all you have to do is to use your trimmer. And then we're going to cut all those elements. So first, as you can see, I'm going to put my measurements on the side. And I'm going to cut those top lines first. Four at the top and four at the bottom. And if your trimmer is not big enough, you can always rotate your card 180 degrees. So for my project, I decided to use dark blue here because I thought that will give me quite a lot of contrast. So let's create those four cut lines at the top and I put my cut on five inches. So this way it is so much easier to keep that cut still in that trimmer. And this trimmer is actually from Craftstash and I have to say that I absolutely love it. All the names of the products are used in today's video. You can check it in the description down below if you're interested. So this trimmer is one of my favorite tools at the moment. I rotated my cut 180 degrees and I'm going to create those cut lines again. So as you can see, from one and a quarter to two and a half inch, then from three and three quarters to five, then from six and a quarter to seven and a half, and from eight and three quarters to ten. Now it is time to create those cut lines. I'm going to put my cut at one inch, and I'm going to cut from one to five inches. So that will be the first side of the swing panel. Then I'm going to move it to 5 inches and do exactly the same. So I'm going to cut from 5 to 1 inches. And then I'm going to rotate my cut to make my job easier and follow the same pattern. So from 1 to 5 inches, then I'm going to move my cut to 5 inches on the trimmer and cut that line. So if you miss some of the spots, you can also use your craft knife just to make sure it is cut perfectly. When this is ready, then we have to fold and burnish all those lines. But yes, let's use our scoring board. And this one comes from Crafter's Companion, and I'm going to place my card here. 
So the first line is at two and a half inches and three and three quarters. Then at seven and a half inches. Then from two and a half, I'm going all the way down and then to the first cut line, and then the same with three and three quarters. Then I'm going to need seven and a half and do exactly the same. I would this time to rotate the cut and do two and a half inches, both from the top and the bottom exactly where the cut lines are. Now it is time to fold and burnish, and if you want, you can also use a bone folder just to make your job easier. Have you ever created a swing card? If you haven't, I really hope you'll give this one a go. It was so much fun to create. And as you can see, you don't really need any cutting dice. And they actually fold in three different ways, which I think is super, super cool. So now I use all the scraps from my stash and I created some white panels. But first I'm going to show you all the measurements. So now the choice is yours if you want to have four panels or two panels. So I've got three and a half by three and a quarters. And then I'm going to need three quarters by two and a quarter. And I need four panels of those. Then I need three quarters by three and a half. And I need two of those. Then I will need three quarters by one inch and I need four panels. And then the longest one that will go on the sides will be one inch by three and three quarters. And I need three of those. So I use my white card and the colored one will be slightly smaller. And I'm going to show you all the measurements in a moment. So don't forget to take a screenshot of all my measurements. So. I'm going to use my one and only liquid glue to put all those white elements on the card. So this way I'm going to have a nice white border around all the images. So as you can see, the bigger squares are ready. And I'm going to assemble them on the card base. And then we need all the other elements just to embellish the card. And this cut, it is super, super easy. And I do encourage you to actually have a look at your stash because Pretty sure you do have some cut left over. And this is just perfect to use it. Using the editing magic, I stack all those elements and now it will be time to embellish the cut. So I need two extra squares here and I'm going to assemble them with my one and only liquid glue. Have you started your Christmas cards this year? If you haven't, maybe this fancy fold is for you. If you do like it, please let me know in the comments down below. Or if you've never ever tried double swing card, I really hope you'll feel inspired because it looks complicated, but to be honest, it is not. So now let's create some smaller panels using the design paper. So I'm going to have three and a quarter by three and a half, and I need two of those. Then I need three quarters by three and a half inch and that will be three panels then i need half of an inch by three quarters four of those and then three and a quarter by half an inch and then that will be two inches by half an inch and i need four of those so you can take a screenshot now so now let's create all those panels using that beautiful blue background so, as you can see, they fit perfectly here. And I absolutely love the white border I created using the scraps from my stash. So I do encourage you to use whatever is left over from your previous projects. Now it is time to assemble the whole cut together. If you haven't heard about Relatively Thoughtful, it is a British company and they've got amazing collections. Most of them are actually digital. However, on the website, you can also get some physical products from different companies. And if you would like to check it, I left the link in the description down below. I also left the link to Craft World, Facebook group, YouTube channel, so you can check all the projects there. And we also have RT Create, Make and Share group. And if you want to create anything from relatively thoughtful design papers, even the ones that you can get for free, on the website, you can share your makes there. And I do encourage you to do so because there are plenty of crafters, very talented crafters, that share their makes there. Now it is time to create some side panels. And as you can see, the angel 
on the right, actually it is on the right hand side, because when we swing the cut, I really want to make sure that that angel is visible. So that was a very thought through, to be honest. Now I'm going to decorate the back panels as well. And I really wanted to use some of the designs that will be either on the left or on the right. Depends the way that I'm going to use the swing card. So as you can see, I've got one more image left and I chose that girl. I think she's just so pretty and that vintage vibes gorgeous just gorgeous so now the cut is nearly complete all we need is to add a sentiment and i chose gold mirror cut and i've got my sentiment in polish because i'm going to give this card to my family member so again i'm going to use my one and only liquid glue to assemble the elements together which is super super cool and I do encourage you to use liquid glue because you do have time to maneuver the elements if you make a mistake. And of course, something is missing and you probably guessed what it is. I need some gold gems. I couldn't resist and I just had to add them on this card. And I do think that gold and blue work so beautiful together. I really like the contrast you get. So this is my very first swing card. As you can see, it stands proudly on a flat surface. Now it will be time to create our second double swing card. And I use exactly the same measurements. However, here I've got a craft card and I'm going to use my bone folder to burnish all those scoring lines. Super quick and simple. And this card is going to fold in a slightly different way. So whenever you create your fancy folds, just have a look how you can adjust the folds to make it slightly different. And as you know me, you know how much I like to create three cards and one go because we already have all those templates ready. So now I adhered all those white elements and it will be time to decorate our card. So let's start with those two elements at the back using the white card. And now it will be time to add some of the elements from the collection. And I was very amazed when I chose that craft card because in this collection you also have those lilac and orange design papers and I thought they would work so well with that craft card and white card. So let's create all those elements using that design paper. It is so gorgeous so I couldn't resist. Now it will be time to assemble them. And again, I'm going to use my one and only liquid glue. As you can see, all those measurements work so well because you've got even borders everywhere. Often do you create fancy folds? If you do have your favorite, please let me know in the comments down below. I absolutely love to play with them. And I think they are so unusual and literally perfect for any occasion. So I usually create fancy folds for birthday, but today I decided to create a fancy fold style for Christmas. If you think it's a good idea, please let me know in the comments down below. And as you can see, I was very busy for the last couple of days because I've got quite a lot of videos with my new collection. If you'd like to have even more uh, videos with beautiful inspiration, don't forget to subscribe to my channel because I've got some more videos coming your way very soon. Now I decided to use those elements from this collection and again I really wanted to have Santa, one on the left and one on the right. So this way when we actually swing the card we can see the image. And if you want you can also use one of those rectangles blank so we have space to write your message. And I'm going to do it on my very last card today. What do you think about this color palette for Christmas card? I think it's pretty unique, but I really, really like it. So as you can see, this card is nearly completed. And again, I'm going to use exactly the same sentiment and polish using gold mirror card. So that double swing card folds a little bit different way. So here I decided to use my sentiment, one word at the top and one at the bottom. 
useful extra variation. And of course you can do it. And I'm pretty sure you do have a ton of sentiments in your stash that you can use for any project. And now it is time to add some gold gems and the cut is complete. Super quick and simple. So if you're thinking about trying something new today, this double swing cut is for you. And again, it stands proudly on a flat surface. So what do you think about cut number two? Do you like it? Please let me know in the comments down below. So for my last cut, again, I chose a colored card for the base. And I think this is super cool. Already cut all those panels and use my scoring board. It will be time to decorate it. So all the white panels are adhered and that's how this double swing cut is going to fold, which is slightly different way. So it is my third way how to create a double swing cut. So if you like it, please let me know in the comments down below. Now it is time to choose some of the background panels to decorate the card. And as you can see, it is super simple to create. All you have to do is to choose the design papers, which I think is usually the most difficult. And when these are ready, then again, I'm going to choose some of the elements from the beautiful vintage Christmas postcards collection. Have you heard about this collection before? Or maybe you do have your favorite vintage Christmas collection. If you do, please let me know in the comments which one is it. Because I absolutely love vintage style and I think it is so pretty for many different occasions. And I think even Christmas is just perfect. So when these are ready, it will be time to choose some of the elements from the collection. And here I'm going to use one of those white panels and I'm going to leave it blank. For this one, I decided to use some angels. They are so pretty. And that vintage style is just gorgeous, isn't it? So when the angels are ready, we can also use one of the other elements. And when you struggle to assemble the elements, you can always turn your cut over. And that will be perfectly fine. And it actually makes me think about never-ending cut a little bit. So now I've got that Santa and I'm going to put him here together with that beautiful house in the background. So the cut is nearly complete and there is plenty of space in that rectangle to write your message. And now it will be time for a sentiment. And again, I use exactly the same gold mirror cut and a sentiment in Polish. Do you put the words or do you stamp them for your Christmas cards? What's your preference? Because I really like to add die cut sentiments on top of my projects. I think they just stand out even more. So now, when this is ready, as you can see, it opens in a slightly different way and it stands proudly on a flat surface. So I really wonder which double swing card do you like the most? Now we can see all three side by side. So do you like the one with angels or maybe Santa's with those angels and that orange and purple color? Maybe the first card where I created the images with Santa and the angel. Please let me know which one is your favorite. Thank you so much for watching and spending that time with me. I know it was a pretty long video, but I think it was worth in the end. And if you do feel inspired, please let me know in the comments down below. Have a wonderful day and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you need, because there are more videos coming your way. Have a wonderful day and happy crafting!